Hey everyone, Ian here. So today we're going to be looking at Ada, which is found at ada.chat. Ada is described as GPT power coding in your terminal. It's a command line chat tool that allows you to write and edit code with OpenAI's GPT models. You can ask GPT to help you start a new project or modify code in your existing repo. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install it, how to use it on a couple of projects, how to create a new one and how to uh, use it on an existing one. And um, we'll also look at some of the pricing behind it as well, how much it actually costs to run. Um, so yeah, with all that said, let's get on with things. So this project's been started back in May, but in the last week it's doubled the amount of stars that it's had and then some, um, just because of all the interest that there is around AI at the moment. And the interesting thing it does is that it allows you to create the git commits without having to copy and paste back and forth and create those git commits yourself. So. I'm going to go ahead and get it installed. So this project is created by Paul Gaultier, I think it is. So the first thing I'm going to do, because it's a PyPy project, you can uh, install it with uh, just Ada Chats. So I'm going to do create a virtual environment first so that it keeps my project dependencies isolated from everything. So we do that, we just do Python dash minus M VN VM and so that's we're calling the VM module and we're creating a VM called VM and then we just need to activate that so we do source and then the VM name and then bin activate and now that's activated what we need to do is install ADA itself so we do pip install ADA chat so yeah there's quite a lot of dependencies there but they've all come down nicely um, let's clear that down. Next thing you want to do is create an OpenAI API key. If you head to platform.openai.com, uh, you can see your API keys just in this drop down here. Head in there, create one, copy it out to your um, terminal. So you just paste it in here by doing export OpenAI. So I'm on a Mac here, so it's slightly different on Windows API key and then just type your API key in there. And then once you've done that, we can just get started. So I've not actually done anything on OpenAI this month, so we'll also be taking a look at some it, where, how much this actually costs to run, which is something you're going to need to consider if you're doing programming with AI. To kick this off, I'm just literally going to call adaapp.py. So we've got no ada files at the moment. And it's created an empty file, app.py, and there's no git repo, uh, and there's no map of the repo. So that's another interesting thing it does is it creates a map of your repository so it can index that and send it back and forth between OpenAI so that it kind of minimizes the amount of changes that it needs to send across as context. So I'm going to say make a fast API API that's serves dad jokes. I did this in a previous one and so we'll see how this stacks up against it. So this is interesting, it's come back with a full description of what you need to do, um, what needs to be installed, fast API and UVCon, that it needs to create this new file and that it's going to create a root with I can has dad choke uh, request out. So it asks me if I want to create it. I go, yeah. So we can see it's copied out the code to that file. Interestingly, it's created an extra file app.py, which doesn't have anything in it. And it hasn't created like a git repo for us here. That we're, that's something that we'll have to do ourselves. Okay, so let's try that out in the terminal. So we're currently in the environment for um, that we've used to install ADA. So what I'm going to do is deactivate that and create another one for the actual project. And then I can activate that instead. So here we haven't got written out to file a requirements file or anything like that as part of the, um, the chat that we've already had. So that's something that we probably would want. Okay, let's install, pip install, fast API in Uvicon. And then let's just run that. Okay, so interestingly, it's Mr. Dependency there because it's making this request call out. It has Mr. Dependency to go and get requests and install that. I will add that myself. And it didn't mention that as part of the chat there. So we go back to that chat so we can see. Oh, in fact, actually it does. 
it's just me that uh, did not read all of it. Okay, so that is running. Let's see if we can get a dad joke. Did you hear the news? FedEx and UPS are merging. They're going to buy by the name of FedUp from now on. Ho, ho, ho. So what I might ask it to do is modify this and include a requirements file. Add a requirements dot txt for the project. So you want to do that? Yes, please. Okay, cool. And there we go. We've now got a requirements.txt that we don't have to worry about. So let's take a look at this usage history. So for those couple of calls that I first made that we've got usage of seven cents, that is fairly good compared to some of the other applications that I've uh, run in the past. Uh, what I might do now is ask it just to update this so that perhaps it's not uh, to make a change to it. So I'm going to say, get the jokes from a jokes.txt file. So it's saying to get the jokes uh, from a file, it needs to replace the main.py file. And you can see the diff that it's doing there. So you can see it's replacing that request with a jokes.txt. And it looks like it's already made that change. There we go. And it's saying that you need to make a jokes.txt file. So let's do that. Okay, so I've just copied those jokes in now. Let's restart the app. Why don't eggs tell jokes? Because they might crack up. Hmm, yes. So we've been able to make a change. It's done a diff correctly. Um, and that's all great. So when we're chatting with Ada, we can actually do this slash and we've got these shortcuts for doing add, commit, drop, help, or clear, diff, exit, and ls um, on our files, which is kind of handy. So it's kind of, it gives what it thinks the current state of its system is, which is kind of cool. So I'm gonna end this chat now. I'm then going to move everything into a subfolder for now. So let's deactivate this. One of the final things to show is that it actually works with an existing repo. I'm going to pull down a repository that I already have. So this is my Christmas tree coordinates project, and I'm just going to clone that locally. So nice and seasonal for the time of year. So I've just cloned that uh, repository locally. You can see that it's running um, Flask, the Python version of 3.10. So optionally, you can install universal C tags, and that makes it really easy for Ada to create this index of your repository um, in order for it to be able to communicate that as context more easily to OpenAI. So if you want to install that, you can do it just with this Hopebrew form formulae. Formulae? Formula. Um, which is uh, brew install universal C tags. And then we go, we've just installed that. That's all come down nicely. And then I'm going to point Ada to the Christmas tree repo that I have. So like I said, this is just a Flask uh, repository. I don't know which version of Flask it's actually using. So let's have a look at that. So that's using 202. And if we take a look at um, PyPy, we can see that the latest version is 2.3.2, so I'm just going to get it to see if it can update to the latest version. So we'll do, make sure we've got that um, Ada environment activated that we originally created. So that's with the one with Ada installed in it. And then I'll just do Ada and then the name of the, file, uh, the folder, which is Xmas Tree Coordinates. We can see that it's using the GPT-4 model and it's using universal C tags and it's found the Git repo. So let's say update to, the, to version 2.32 of Flask. Okay, so that's interesting. Because this project is done with pipenv, it's not identified that. It's assumed that it's using a requirements file, which is not what I'm doing. I'm doing something different. I do not have a requirements file. So it's kind of 
is saying that if we don't have a requirements file, we should create one. So we can actually do that. So to do that, we can just do pip m requirements and then I'll dump it out to a requirements text file. So update flask to 3.2. So that's completely wrong. It's looking at it. I don't know if it can read it still because it's basically coming back with content that is not actually in that file. So I provided the requirements file. It's not actually reading it there. It did just inform me that it had some uncommitted changes and it's created a commit message as part of that. So I created that requirements file because it wasn't originally in that repo. That's possibly why it's not been able to see it because it wasn't originally part of the git commit so it's not created a c tags of that file and it wasn't committed and so it kept it out of the conversation history even though it existed on the file system which is um, it's not how I'd expect it to behave but anyway so let's see if we can update flask finally okay that looks much better because it's got 202 there and it says it will update it to 232. After making this change, you should pip install requirements in your terminal to update version. Applied the edit update flask to 232 and there you go. So that's interesting because it's not been able to figure out that we've got a pipm project and then we, it's automatically assumes that we're going to be using requirements or TSD, which we might not be doing if we're using a different virtual environment manager. So it's not going to be using Py, um, Py projects files or pip files or anything like that, I suppose. So let's inspect the Git history just to actually make sure that it's made the changes that we expected it to. So we can see there's Ada has actually updated Flask to 232. There's a somewhat confusing message history there, um, which eventually ends in the updating Flask to 232. So you can see you've got a couple of failed statements there. Um, and the changes can make. So this is quite a verbose message for as commit messages go, but then it's an agent making it, so that's fair enough. And we can see it has added that first one as well, where it's adding the requirements file didn't exist in the first place. Now let's go back to our billing and see where we are with the usage, because we were at 6p, and we can see that we've got up to 65 cents for all of those queries. I think most of those changes probably came in the last five minutes when I was trying to get it to um, get that last git commit in and understand the requirements.txt properly. So whilst editing this, I had the dawning realization that I should have just gone back to Ada and said, I'm using pipenv. And if you do that, it will say, oh, you need to update the pip file in that case, and it'll make those edits for you. So it just shows you probably need to be questioning everything that the AI agent is saying to you, and that you shouldn't just follow it blindly. I think I prefer this approach to some of the others that I've seen in that we get an exact output of what's going on. And it's quite, it's actually quite nicely formatted in what was coming through in the terminal there. Um, tells you exactly what's going on, what changes are going to be made, and um, if you actually read the instructions, uh, everything that it's doing. So um, yeah, I kind of I think I prefer that to something where you're just giving us a prompt and hoping for the best sort of thing. So yeah, what do you think about this uh, Ada chat? I don't know if I'll be using it based on the way it's behaves on this particular project. Go and check it out. Let me know what you think, um, and uh, like and subscribe for more of this sort of stuff. And I'll see you in a future video soon. All right, bye for now. Bye.